Since I was born, like 30 days after I was born, uh, we were, went overseas because my dad was playing overseas in Greece. And so from the ages of right when I was born to 12, we, we've, I've been traveling pretty much my whole life watching my dad play. I mean, I, I've grown up just watching Bob all my whole life, and, and I mean, that's why I love it so much. Growing up with one of the, one of the best players ever play as a dad and a coach, uh, I've, got, I've got the best tips and pointers and lessons that I could possibly get from anybody. Perfect pass by Dryden. Ball again to ball on the left side and hammered down the line. So my volleyball career started at the age of four. I never forget the time that dad uh, was getting yelled at by mom by taking cushions off the sofa and making a net out of them. Then he blew up a balloon and him and I played one on one and that was my first introduction to volleyball and I've been in love with it ever since. When I was 15 years old, I was chosen to play in the Olympic Festival. At 15, I was the youngest player ever chosen, most of them are college. Then at 17, I was asked by the national team to play on the national team. And at that time, I started getting an inclination that maybe volleyball was something I should look further into. On my signing day, uh, my senior year, I had not yet decided what I was going to do. And just like a lot of signing days, there was media there. You know, in Fort Wayne, I was heralded as one of the better basketball players in the area, uh, recruited by Bob Knight, recruited to play both sports, volleyball and basketball, by USC and Stanford, recruited by other volleyball schools. And I remember going to bed that night uh, beforehand at the kitchen table, and my dad told me, uh, Arnie says, Loy, you're an idiot not to play for Coach Knight. So I'm like, well, okay, that's a pretty good endorsement from my father. I went to bed that night, said my prayers, woke up the next morning and knew I wanted to play volleyball. And I knew I wanted to play for my dad. At that point in time, my dad had not won an MIBA championship. He had not been to a Final Four. And I have always been one that wanted to do something different than everybody else. So I decided I was going to be the first one to give my dad an MIBA championship. The first one to give my dad a Final Four appearance. Inside. See the ball inside the block. Yeah, yeah. Move up. My freshman year after losing to Ball State 33 times in a row. Um, I remember my dad coming home every year as a high school student, uh, swearing about Ball State, and we're so close, we're so there, and yet he never could get over the hump. And so we actually played my freshman Play year. Ball, and it goes five sets like it always does with the Dons and the Cards. And finally, we yeah, win 15-13 in the fifth set against a great Ball State team. And it was the final straw to get PFW, IPFW, over the hump, uh, over Ball State. That moment was a defining moment of my college career that we finally got dad that final four. And it was over his arch emesis, uh, the Ball State Cardinals. Once I left college in 94, I went out there and four weeks later I was named starting setter at the World Championships. And so it took me very little time to become the starting setter of what would be the Olympic team. Uh, I knew from that point on that I was going to play volleyball as long as I could. So you think about the two greatest moments for me, and there was a bunch of wins and losses in between. But the one is the first time representing my country in my country at Atlanta. The second one is my last Olympics at the age 36 with my son in the crowd and my wife and my, and my mom and dad and winning that elusive gold medal that I've been chasing since once again, that age of four, kind of put a good cap on that career. I always wanted to be a basketball player. I mean, I, I love watching basketball. I love playing basketball when I was younger. My junior and senior year, I, I realized that I didn't really want to do that anymore. And I started getting an interest in volleyball a little bit more again. I was like, yeah, this is maybe something that I want to do after, after high school. I would say around 14, Dyer played club one year uh, at 14. And started noticing his jumping and started knowing his timing. I noticed right there that he had some tendencies as a lefty kid that could be good. His junior year when he came back, he ended up playing with my, and I was still playing at that team, my professional team here domestically. And it was kind of for funsies, uh, but sure enough, as a setter, I'm setting, I'm setting, and Dyer gets in the line, and Dyer hits a ball. And Dyer hits another ball. And all of a sudden, these other guys, guys like Jeff Patak, Jorge Rolot, Chris Gisson, who are all, all Americans for IPFW that were playing with me at the time, go, has Dyer played volleyball a whole lot? I'm like, no, not really. He's got a good arm swing. Got a natural eye for it. So sure enough, I think the positive influence by those guys and those guys, listen, dad saying you're good is one thing. These other guys who are also just as good as dad used to be saying you're good all of a sudden spurs the interest of the young man, right? 
I always had that love for it. I just wanted to give another try. And once I did, I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely something I want to do again. And I mean, it's always been in our blood. It's been a, my, my, my family's a big volleyball family and I wanted to keep that going. I definitely felt a little bit of pressure to be a, be a great volleyball player, just be a volleyball player in general. I don't really feel any pressure anymore. I, I love what I'm doing and I, I'm just happy that I can keep going as a volleyball player for the ball family. I mean, he's always supported me in anything that I've done. But I mean, me, me and my dad have always had a really strong connection and sports has always been kind of at the center of that. I always wanted to go to Ball State. I don't really know why, but that, that was just a place that I really wanted to go. Luckily, I got the opportunity last year from Joel. He gave me the uh, option to come and play here, and I knew this is exactly where I wanted to come. I had a great visit. Um, I love the campus. I love everything about it, and so this is definitely where I wanted to go. I wouldn't say that I'm a uh, X Factor on the court as of right now, but when I do get my time to go in and play, I like to bring as much energy as possible. I want to make sure that everyone is uh, up and focused. I mean, it's just a lot of off the, off the camera work during the summers, being in the gym after I work, uh, being in the gym every night. I mean, my, my dad was nev never not in the gym, and I, I, that, that's what I have to do if I want to get to that level. Only Dyer's success here in college so far is because Dyer has wanted it. And I and his mother and his sister will do everything we can to help him, but you have to ask for it. And that's when we know it's real. If you ask, be prepared to do the hard things. Uh, and so Dyer thus far has done that. I, th I think he's usually always coach mode. Even when we're just hanging out at home, we'll, if we're watching any type of game or anything like that, he'll always be like, hey, you should be doing this or whatever. Coach mode gets pretty intense. He's been my coach for um, during basketball, football, and volleyball. And uh, he makes sure that I know if I mess up. Dad mode, is a, he's, he's great. I mean, we, we hang out, we have a lot of fun. There's definitely a big difference, but I love coach mode and dad mode. When my dad played at IPFW, Ball State was their rival, so he, he was a little mad about it. But I mean, he was just happy that I got to come here and or got to play D1 volleyball. I mean, it's the Battle of the I-69 teams. I got to watch them play at IPFW multiple times when I was younger. I'd go down and watch my grandpa coach. I mean, I didn't really know or understand um, when I was younger how big of a rivalry it was. But now being here and playing on the other side, it's a real fun opportunity to either be in the game or just watch these two teams play. I hated him because I kept beating my dad, right? And here I am, a 12-year-old kid. I like people beating my dad. During my time, it was a great rivalry. And during my tenure, we were blessed enough to get the best of them. After you leave, obviously those things start to settle. The rivalry slowly went away, and so as Dyer decides where he's going to play and he just chooses Ball State, it really wasn't that big of a deal anymore. And, you know, his grandfather played here, he's playing here, I'm the Don in between a little bit, and so they're two great schools, and no school has a better history than Ball State. But it was awesome. It was, it was my dad's 50th birthday, too. I'm glad I got the opportunity to start there. I, I played pretty well, I thought. I think I made my dad pretty happy with that. Well, it was awesome. Um, you know, I had told, because uh, I was in the gym at uh, PFW earlier that week, uh, talking to Coach Parrott, and the boys came up and said, hey, are you cheering for us against the cards? I said, I'm cheering for you 51% unless Dyer plays, then it's 51 for Ball State and 49 for you. And so sure enough, Dyer got the start, and they squeaked out a five-set win. And so, listen, I'm always going to be a Don, right? But I'm a dad of a card. And so you have to balance those two things.